Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the inaugural Silk Road Forum. This is a momentous event in Georgia's history, and I'm excited that you're here to participate in it. For many centuries, the ancient Silk Road was the most important land route connecting Europe and Asia. It was a unique path that became a source of prosperity and intensive trade relationships. Equally important, it promoted the exchange of knowledge, experience and cultural interactions now in different countries. Today we take an important step in breathing new life into this corridor of global prosperity and cooperation. Two weeks ago I was in New York and I spoke at the United Nations, Nations General Assembly about my dreams for Georgia. And I said that my government's goal is to build Georgia into a prosperous country that leverages its geographic location as vital crossroads connecting east and west, north and south. So this forum is, a, is an important step towards reaching that goal. In hosting this forum, Georgia is playing a role it has held for millennia, that of regional hub and center for e-exchange, Georgia is Europe's natural gateway towards Asia, marking Europe's easternmost entry point by both land and sea. And I like to say we are Europe's shortcut to the Silk Road. Without deep ties to the European Union, including our new association and free trade agreements, our historical links throughout the region and our burgeoning trade with China, India, Japan and elsewhere in the Middle East and Asia, Georgia is the ideal platform for today's discussion. And Pelisi, our capital, has been busy playing this role recently. So far this year, Georgia has hosted the annual meeting of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development and the inaugural meeting of Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. And I hope this forum will be equally successful. Global interest is interest in Georgia is growing, particularly uh, because of our strategic location and also our welcoming business environment. In fact, I visited China several weeks ago and received an incredibly warm welcome. I was encouraged by how many businesses were interested in Georgia and announced significant new investments here during that trip. So these recent events highlight Georgia's transformation into a multi-region commercial gateway, connecting Europe, East Asia, India, Central Asia, and the Middle East. From Georgia, individuals and companies have easy access to billions of consumers in Asia and Europe. Through our country, Asian products and energy resources reach Europe much faster. But however, this forum is not just about highlighting Georgia's important role as a bridge between Europe and Asia. It is about creating a shared benefit for all people from Beijing to Brussels. And one of the great historical anom anomalies in uh, recent times is the absence of the Silk Road from the full modernization and integration of global trade. Today we seek to change that. The Silk Road region accounts for two-thirds of the world's population and 60% of the GDP. And I've said this many times and I want to repeat that. If fully utilized, it will expand trade, develop new energy resources and supply chains, and increase cultural exchanges. This forum, dear friends, is about all of us in this room, coming in to work hard to rebuild the Silk Road, removing barriers to deep integration and promoting economic prosperity for all. The countries of the Silk Road are dynamic, and thanks to reforms undertaken in recent years, we have strong and growing economies. However, no matter how much we can achieve individually, regional cooperation is critical. 
to reaching our full potential. The Tbilisi Silk Road Forum brings together states, businesses, international organizations and civil society actors. It provides a space to drive forward mutually beneficial projects and initiatives. And it reinforces old friendships and establishes new ones. Our success will depend on our ability to fully harness the capacities and potential of the Silk Road by generating new ideas, new initiatives which will boost cooperation while avoiding conflict. But before going on, let me pause to give uh, special thanks to co-organizers and co-sponsors of this event. First, I must thank the Chinese government, the US government, and the Asian Development Bank for their support and invaluable help in making this event possible. This event is actually the first time the Chinese government has been the co-organizer of an international event on the Silk Road outside of China. And this support was provided under the leadership of President Xi Jinping and shows his and China's strong commitment towards Georgia and leading the revitalization of the Silk Road. I would also like to thank the U.S. government for its steadfast support of Georgian democratic and economic development. I greatly appreciate new areas of cooperation between our two countries that are enabling us to further develop Georgia's human capital and economic capacity. I must also extend a special welcome to many of our guest speakers. I am joined at this panel by the special representative of the Chinese government to this forum, the governor of Chinese, China's Xinjiang Autonomous Region, Mr. Shukrat Zakir. Please welcome. We have uh, Deputy Prime Minister uh, of Azerbaijan, Mr. Abid Sharifov. Uh, Vice Prime Minister of Kyrgyzstan, Mr. Valery Dil. United States Deputy Secretary of Commerce, Mr. Bruce Andrews. Minister of Culture, Youth and Social Development of the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Nahayan Mubarak Al Nahayan. <laughs> Vice President of the Asian Development Bank, Mr. Rensai Chan. <laughs> who's coming from uh, Peru, actually, who took a flight and uh, spent uh, over 30 hours to join us. So once again, I want to thank him. And um, Vice President of the European Investment Bank, Mr. Laszlo Borania. And of course, Dr. Hernando de Soto from The Economist, who we have already met. So I want to thank you again for joining me. So this first panel alone underscores, underscores the importance uh, of this gathering. On this stage, we have brought together the Caucasus, uh, Central uh, Asia, China, the United States, Europe, and the Middle East, as well as European and Asian development banks to discuss how to bring two continents closer together. And this highlights how Georgia is a friend of all countries and is a natural place to bring together all parties for fruitful discussion. Beyond this first uh, panel, we are joined by the high-level representatives of over 32 governments throughout Europe and Asia. You will hear from many of them throughout the forum. We are also joined by representatives of numerous uh, international uh, organizations, including the United Nations, European Union, ADB, European Investment Bank, 
the Silk Road Fund from China, World Bank, EBRD, IGC, Traseca, the Intergovernmental Organization for International Carriage, and the International Road Transport Union. So this high-level attendance underscores that many have reached the same conclusion. The political and economic investments of the last 25 years are starting to pay off, and the historical crossroads of civilization is ready to take its place as a major driver of global economic growth. Finally, I must extend a warm welcome to all, the, all of the business leaders that have come to this meeting, both from Georgia and outside our country. Some of you will be participating in the discussions on stage, and know, I know that um, all of you came uh, to explore investments. So in total, we have nearly 1,000 people who are participating in, the, in this forum. So I think this is an amazing accomplishment for our first such event. Again, thank you all for coming. The fact that hundreds of businessmen and women have come to this forum is proof of the Silk Road's potential. I firmly believe that trade and commerce will drive peaceful cooperation. And I know I speak for all governments represented here when I say that our business leaders are among our nation's best ambassadors. They build the bridges that unite us. And through them we, are share, we all share in prosperity. And I hope uh, all of you here will take the time to discuss how you can cooperate with one another. I also want to urge you all to take part in the various B2B activities that our economy ministry has worked hard to set up. The potential of this new Silk Road is not modest and neither is the scope of this forum. We will discuss regional cooperation across a number of important sectors, such as transport, infrastructure, energy, hospitality, and cross-border trade, and benefit from the guidance and input of highly experienced moderators and panelists. We will address many of the opportunities and challenges of the Silk Road over the next two days, but I want to highlight one issue as a perfect example. Today, most goods travel from China to Europe via a long sea route. And by working together, the countries along the Silk Road can transport goods from China to Europe significantly faster and at a fraction of the cost. However, this will require that we work together to simplify tariff and customs policies and integrate and modernize our infrastructure. So my request, my friends, to everyone attending this conference is to work together and come up with a new path for turning potential into reality. This is the first forum and my goal is that we leave today with a work plan for how to deepen integration along the Silk Road and the next year we can all report on the significant progress made in implementing this plan. A new era is opening for our region. There is much work to be done, but I am excited at the prospect of future forums marking our progress to achieving a bright future together. So I look forward to hearing from you over the next days and learning about your vision for the future of this approach. Thank you again. Thank you.